Today, I have a letter to a young woman whose name I do not want any of us to know because we already know too much about her. We already know how she was assaulted and photographed. And we know how she was shamed via social media. And we know that she has been bullied since the young men who raped her were found guilty. And I don't want us to know her name because she deserves some modicum of privacy as she tries to heal. But I do want her to know that she is not alone, which is why my letter today is to the 16-year-old Steubenville survivor. Dearest beloved girl, this letter is an apology, an apology for being an adult who has failed to make the world safe for you. Because you should be safe. Even when you make the, the sometimes stupid, often naive choices that teens make, you should be safe. And your vulnerability should not invite assault and attack of your body or your spirit. And so I'm sorry. Because we have failed to teach your male peers that they have no right to touch you without your consent or to use you to meet their needs or to discard you if your victimization does not fit their life plan. I am sorry we have failed you. And this letter is also a note of gratitude for your willingness to report this crime and to take the stand and to endure the viciousness hurled at you this week. I know the words that run in a loop in your mind. Don't tell. If you tell, no one will believe you. If you tell, everyone will think you are a whore. Sometimes it's him who says it first, spewing the words like mold spores that grow in the darkness of your silence. And sometimes it's your own voice telling you, I can't tell. No one will believe me. It's the reason 54% of survivors never report the assault. It's the reason I kept my secret for nearly a decade. But not you, beloved. You demanded the right to be heard. You may have lost your voice that night, but you found it again when you told the truth. Even though you knew, didn't you? You knew just how relentlessly they would try to silence you, and you knew that neighbors and friends and even members of the national media would mourn the loss of your attackers' football careers more than the loss of your innocence. And you knew that even those who claim to be sympathetic would, would pass along the pictures of your assault with a kind of tone-deaf voyeurism that seeks to make you a thing instead of a person. I think you knew or maybe you suspected these things, but you spoke out anyway. And that, that is astonishing. And, and I just need to say thank you because you did what so many of us never find the strength to do. You spoke for yourself and you spoke for the 44% of rape victims who are under 18. And you spoke for my 14 year old self who still hears that threat in my head. Don't tell, no one will believe you. So this is my apology and this is my gratitude. And this is me saying, I believe you. I believe that you are inherently valuable, not as a character in some grotesque news cycle where your assault is all we know, but as a girl with hopes and dreams and ambitions and vulnerabilities and so much more growing up to do. I never need to know your name, but I need you to know that you're not alone. Surviving is not a single occurrence. It's a lifetime of making choices that honor you and your right to speak. You have begun surviving. You're going to continue surviving. And if you ever get down, if you ever wonder how you're going to go on, take out this letter, because I believe you. Sincerely, Melissa.